This training video is intended only to supplement the core wash procedure in the Boeing 777 Aircraft Maintenance Manual. For complete details of this core wash procedure, refer to the printed instructions for the GE-90 found in the AMM. This video training tape has been put together to demonstrate the flight line procedure for gas path cleaning of the GE-90 as specified in the Boeing 777 Aircraft Maintenance Manual. The AMM procedure introduces fluids to the core flow path while the engine is being motored, primarily for cleaning of the high pressure compressor, or HPC. This has been shown to be the most effective cleaning process and is consistent with similar procedures on other GE product lines. Following fluid application, the engine must be run to part power for dry out as specified in the AMM. This procedure can be found in the AMM engine section 720000 cleaning page, block 700. Verify that you have the latest revision AMM to assure that you'll be using the current core wash procedure. To supplement the AMM procedure, Commercial Engine Service Memorandum 002 has been published to describe a recommended procedure to determine the right cyclic interval in which to core wash the GE90 and determine if the use of soap is beneficial to improve the core wash's effectiveness. Reference also the June 1998 GE90 fleet highlights for an overview of core washing and the CSUM recommended evaluation process. Core wash of the GE90 may be conducted for several reasons. Core washing has been shown to improve engine performance and reduce long-term EGT margin loss, which can lead to prolonged on-wing life. Core washing may also be used to eliminate debris, such as bird strike remnants, within the engine, which may produce foul odors. Shown here are several stages of a typical compressor after approximately 1,000 flight cycles. Buildup can be seen on the airfoils, most noticeably on the airfoils leading and trailing edges. The extent of this buildup is very dependent on how and where the aircraft is operated, and may vary greatly from operator to operator. That is why it's important to establish a core wash program specific to your operations as described in the CSUM. These are now shots of the same compressor following core wash per the AMM procedure. Although some light buildup can still be seen on the airfoils, it should be noted that the large deposits on the leading and trailing edges have been removed. This engine recovered approximately 10 degrees Celsius takeoff EGT margin from the core wash. Optional bore scoping of several compressor stages can also help determine the need for and impact of core washing. Typically, an experienced crew can wash a GE-90 engine with the recommended equipment in approximately two to three hours elapsed time, inclusive of engine dryout run. To reduce the occurrence of debris ingestion into the core, the GE-90 is designed with several notable features, such as its conical elliptical spinner, which by virtue of its shape deflects particles outside the booster inlet. Large fan blade to booster inlet spacing allows most particles to be centrifuged outside the booster inlet and not enter the core flow path. And VBV doors scheduled open during low power operation extract a majority of any particles that may have gotten into the core flow path. In addition to minimizing FOD events, these features also keep out small abrasive particles such as sand that would normally provide some abrasion cleaning of the HPC airfoils. As a result of these features, the GE90 HPC is prone to buildup of material, which is generally 100 microns in size and smaller, on the airfoil, which degrades compressor efficiency and elevates EGT at constant speed. This buildup is generally water-soluble and is readily removed by liquid gas path cleaning. On-wing gas path cleaning has typically resulted in reductions in cruise trend EGT of approximately 10 degrees Celsius dependent on cycles since new or last core wash. Most of this improvement is shown to be in the HPC. These same design features that minimize FOD events and keep smaller abrasive particles out of the core, along with the GE90's wide cord fan, make it very difficult to wash the booster and HPC by the ingestion of a cleaning solution or water from the front of the engine. 
through extensive testing and development, it has been shown that the most practical method of performing a core wash is to inject the cleaning solution or water into the booster downstream of the fan blades. The AMM procedure specifies the use of a commercially available wash cart that uses probes sized specifically for the GE90 to inject fluids into the booster aft of the fan while air motoring the engine. This video demonstrates the use of that specific cart. This video was shot at the GE Peebles test operation, and as such, the aircraft level tasks are not able to be shown directly. All engine level tasks are shown in this video, with aircraft level tasks mentioned in the appropriate sequence in the procedure. Refer to the operating manual available with your wash cart and be familiar with its operation. For the AMM referenced wash cart, its basic operational steps are placarded on the side of the cart for general reference. The referenced wash cart is completely self-contained and consists of the following basic features. A four-wheel towable steerable dolly supporting two 25 imperial gallon tanks holding the selected washing liquids, with one tank labeled wash and one labeled rinse. The tank features include fill ports with removable strainer and hinged filler cap, pressure relief valve, tank pressure gauge, and graduated sight glasses indicating fluid level for each tank. Tank labels, nitrogen inlet control valves, and fluid outlet ball valves are all color coded with red for the wash or cleaning liquid and blue for rinse or pure water. Other features of the wash cart include two nitrogen cylinders that provide pressure for discharging the washing fluids and a high pressure regulator valve and gauges to indicate nitrogen cylinder pressure and regulated output pressure to the tanks for discharge of the fluids. The fluid being discharged leaves either tank and passes through a three-way engine selection ball valve which selects the applicable main fluid delivery hose with its protective bumper which flows the cart's output to the fluid delivery manifold assembly. This manifold assembly provides outlets for as many as four probe extension hoses. For the GE90, two outlets should be capped off and the other two used for connecting the two probe extension hoses which flow the manifold's output to the two curved GE90 probes which inject the washing fluids into the booster. These probes have plastic coated tips to protect the engine components during use. There are two engine probe clamping assemblies to secure the wash probes to the engine's fan cowl support. As specified in the AMM, washing of a GE90 can be done by applying a liquid gas path cleaning solution followed by a water rinse or by two water rinses only. GE recommends the use of an approved liquid gas path cleaning solution in cases where the buildup on the engine may be petroleum based such as oil in the compressor or an oily buildup on the airfoils. Liquid gas path cleaning solutions approved for use on the GE90 are listed in the Boeing and GE consumable listing and standard practice manual. Environmentally friendly, aqueous based and other solvent based cleaning solutions are available. Some of the cleaning solutions approved for cleaning are available pre-mixed such that no dilution is required or as a concentrate that must be diluted with water as specified by the manufacturer. To core wash, you will need to accumulate the wash cart and all associated hardware, the cleaning solution if you'll be using a cleaning agent, water, and a corrosion inhibiting compound which must be added to the engine's oil tank prior to beginning the cleaning procedure. Note that water which is of drinkable quality may meet the AMM requirements for water quality. Assure this has been confirmed in advance. Core washing should not be performed with ambient temperatures below 14 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 10 degrees Celsius. For ambient temperatures between 14 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit, an antifreeze solution must be prepared using isopropyl alcohol in a ratio that is temperature dependent as specified by the AMM. As is recommended for any maintenance task on a twin-engine aircraft, engine washes should not be performed on both the right and left engines during the same maintenance period. Wash each engine during different maintenance periods. Planning the engine wash is important to assure that all equipment is available and that adequate time is available to perform the entire core wash procedure. 
Within one hour of the final rinse cycle, the engine must be run as specified in the AMM procedure to dry out the engine. Considerations must be made for allowing time to perform the dryout run, availability of an approved run area, sufficient aircraft weight to perform the engine run, and any local noise or engine runtime restrictions. As access must be gained to the engine to install the wash probes and prepare the engine for wash, the aircraft thrust reversers must be opened. Assure that the aircraft wing leading edge slats are retracted before opening the fan cowls. To expedite the core wash procedure, preparation of the engine can be worked concurrently with preparing the wash cart. Disconnect the pressure sensor hose B-nuts from the engine electronic controls PS3, P3B, PT25, and P49 ports to avoid getting any liquid into these pressure sensors. Removal of the P0 and P13 are not required as these engine sensing ports are not exposed to liquids from this core wash procedure. One to two quarts of corrosion inhibiting compound must be added to the engine lube tank prior to initiating the core wash procedure. This is to help protect the engine bearings from any moisture that may get into the lube system during the wash procedure. Prepare the wash cart for use as specified by the manufacturer. For the AMM referenced wash cart, the nitrogen cylinders on the cart must be fully charged to assure adequate fluid discharge rate and duration. Fill both tanks on the cart with 90 liters of liquid cleaner and or water. If a liquid cleaner will be used, prepare the water cleaning solution per the manufacturer's recommendation. If the solution is pre-mixed, fill the wash tank directly. Fill the rinse tank with pure water. If the engine will only be rinsed with water, fill both tanks with water. Note the wash cart tank's sight glasses are graduated in imperial gallons and liters, to avoid confusion of imperial gallons versus U.S. gallons, liters will be used throughout this procedure and in the AMM as the prime measure. Connect the wash probes to the wash cart as follows. Remove the main fluid delivery hose from its storage position on the cart and connect it to the fluid delivery manifold, assuring that the two unused ports on the manifold are capped off. Remove the two probe extension hoses from their storage area and connect them to the fluid delivery manifold and lay them out under the engine. Remove the two GE90 wash probes from their holder on the wash cart and connect the probes to the two probe extension hoses. Prior to installation of the probes to the engine, the wash cart's flow rate must be confirmed. The combined flow from both probes must be 38 to 42 liters per minute. This flow rate is important because extensive testing has shown this to be an effective amount of fluid for adequate cleaning and uses most of the cart's total capacity over a period of time consistent with the engine motoring periods. To perform this flow check, it is recommended that the probes be held while the water is discharged for a measured period of time, the cart's sight glass monitored to determine the amount of water discharged, and the total flow rate calculated from these numbers. Open the nitrogen cylinders and regulate the main supply pressure to approximately 50 PSIA. Open the blue nitrogen inlet valve in the pressurizing line to the rinse tank and assure tank pressure of approximately 50 PSIA. Position the three-way engine selector ball valve to the GE90 position. Open the blue fluid outlet valve in the discharge line from the rinse tank and record the amount of water discharge during a measured period of time such as 10 to 15 seconds. Calculate the flow rate for the tank pressure you just set. If the flow rate is greater than 42 liters per minute, adjust the tank pressure to a lower value. If the flow rate is less than 38 liters per minute, adjust the tank pressure to a higher value. Repeat this process until the 38 to 42 liter per minute rate is established and record this pressure as the tank charge pressure. Once the wash cart flow rate has been confirmed, assure both tanks are filled to 90 liters. Set the tank charge pressure as just established in both tanks and begin the wash probe installation to the engine. The probes may be disconnected from the extension hoses if desired to ease installation. 
The first time the probes are used, the bracket mounted directly to the probe will need to be adjusted for proper length. Loosely attach the probe clamping assemblies onto the fan reverser inner support ring. These will be installed at approximately 4 and 8 o'clock aft looking forward for ease of access and more uniform distribution of the cleaning fluid around the entire engine. Remove the knurled cap nut from the probe clamping assembly. Insert the probe through the fan outlet guide vanes from the aft side at a location near the probe clamping assembly clamped onto the cowl support at approximately 8 o'clock aft looking forward. Put the probe's hooked end over the booster fan splitter so that the tip is inserted between booster inlet guide vanes and the tip points into the booster. Position the probe bracket over the stud on the probe clamping assembly. Loosely tighten the knurled nut to hold the probe in place. Assure that the probe is secure, the probe clamping assembly is secure, and securely tighten the knurled nut. Repeat the above for the right-hand side in the 4 o'clock area aft looking forward. Assure both probes are secure and fully inserted into the booster. Hang the distribution manifold onto the drain mast bundle. This does not need to be tightly strapped. Connect the two probe extension hoses between the fluid delivery manifold and the probes. You are now ready to inject 90 liters of cleaning solution followed by a 90 liter water rinse or if a cleaning solution will not be used, two 90 liter water only rinses. At minimum, one person will be required to operate the wash cart, one person to operate the aircraft and engine controls, and one observer. Assure ear protection and positive communication is available for all individuals performing the core wash. Assure that the aircraft bleed system on the engine being washed is turned off. Dry motor the engine for three minutes with the fuel driven actuator test as selected from the maintenance access terminal. Visible water vapors will begin exiting the starter. As soon as core speed reaches 20%, begin injecting the water solution at the rate of 38 to 42 liters per minute by opening the red fluid outlet control valve on the wash tank discharge line. Monitor the tank sight gauges and assure that the 38 to 42 liters per minute flow rate is maintained. Continue to inject the cleaning solution until the tank is empty. Continue motoring the engine for a total of three minutes. Water discharged from the VBVs will be spilling to the ground from the fan case in the six o'clock lower bifurcation area. Core speed will be increasing and decreasing as the VSVs and VBVs cycle open and closed by the fuel-driven actuator test. Assure that maximum obtainable core speeds are achieved and maintained. Core speed should not fall below 20% during the wash procedure. Fluid may be observed exiting the exhaust nozzle after a period of time. Note on the first fluid application there may be no significant fluid discharge from the exhaust nozzle. Soap suds may be observed exiting the core exhaust nozzle. Turn off the red nitrogen inlet control valve and then the red fluid outlet control valve at the wash tank once the contents of the tank have been emptied. Continue to motor the engine until three minutes total elapsed time. Do not stop the starter air supply pressure while any fluid is still being injected. Let the engine soak and drain for five minutes. Water may be draining out the core nozzle drain holes. Repeat the same procedure for the second application, which will be water from the rinse tank. Caution, the engine must be operated as specified in the AMM within one hour of the last application of water to the engine to remove any moisture from the engine oil before any distress is incurred. To expedite preparation for the dry out procedure, preparation of the engine can be worked concurrently with removal of the wash cart and its associated hardware. Engine preparation for the engine dry out run requires the following. Remove water from the four FADEC sensor lines previously disconnected from the engine electronic control by blowing low pressure filtered air through the pressure hose from the B-nuts that would attach to the engine electronic control towards the engine sensor. Do not blow compressed air into the engine electronic control. Reconnect the pressure sensor lines for PS3, P3B, PT25, and P49 to the correct ports on the engine electronic control using the arc wrench method to tighten the connections. 
Remove both probes from the booster. Both probe clamping assemblies from the cowl support rings and the fluid delivery manifold from the drain mast. Stow this hardware on the cart. Assure all wash cart hardware is removed from the engine, stowed properly on the cart, and moved safely away from the aircraft. Assure that both tank caps are left loose so as not to permanently deform the cap seal. Complete aircraft preparation for running to 70% N1 for dry out. Fire the engine to idle and operate for five minutes. While at idle, operate the air conditioning packs and make sure there is no unusual odor. If there are any unusual odors, continue to operate the air conditioning packs until there is no odor. Accelerate the engine to 70% N1 and hold for five minutes. Adhere to operating requirements for the opposite engine. Operation at 70% N1 will further heat the engine and oil to drive out any moisture that may have entered the lube system. This elevated power operation will also produce additional heat that will soak back into the lube system during subsequent operation at idle. While operating at 70% N1, operate the air conditioning packs and make sure there are no unusual odors present. If there is any odor, continue to operate the engine until the odor goes away. Decel the engine to idle. Operate the engine for 20 minutes at ground idle to cool the engine down from its high power static operation and to allow the heat soak conditions to further elevate oil temperatures and allow for complete removal of moisture from the lube system. This relatively simple quick core wash procedure is an easy way to regain and maintain EGT margin for longer on-wing life. It is recommended that you continue to monitor the engine's performance per CSIM002 and establish the correct interval and method for core washing your fleet. If you have any questions on this procedure, please contact your GE90 product support ATPM for further details.